New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Look, it's Ebro in the Morning. We are here at Hot 97 with Laura Stiles. Rosenberg on assignment. He didn't know that we was about to dig in with mental health. Silence the shame. My girl Shanti Dodds is here. Give it up for Shanti Dodds one time. Look, if you don't know who Shanti is, she's been around this hip-hop thing in this music industry for a long time. One of the original uh, label people that worked with Outkast. Yep. LaFace Records down in Atlanta. When the whole music scene really in L.A. went down to Atlanta. No doubt. Um, You was there. You was on the front lines of a lot of signings of, the, of the, those amazing artists. I did a lot of the promotions artists. and marketing. Tony yeah. Braxton, TLC, Usher. Um, and recently you stepped away from the music industry to focus on something that was near and dear to your heart because of some personal experiences. I want to, I want you to tell that with regard to mental health and then I want to get into the whole movement. Okay. So how did you start dealing with mental health in your personal life? So my dad committed suicide or completed suicide when I was seven months old. It was mm. really tough for my family. Uh, we didn't talk about it. I was embarrassed to tell yeah. people that my dad shot himself. Um, so for a long time I just was like mad and angry and mm. I didn't go to counseling or anything. And so fast forward had this successful career, started, you know, dealing with just normal stress and anxiety in life. Mm -hmm. And the depression started creeping in. And so I do think that I'm predisposed to it because of my mom and my dad's depression. Um, and then four years ago, my best friend took her own life. And I was one of the last people to talk to her. Like I was jumping on a plane. I was trying to help her find new doctors. I landed and got the call. And I also have a family member that suffers from bipolar one disorder. And then Ebro, I don't even know if you know this, but, um, 2015, I contemplated suicide. I never knew that. I had planned my own funeral. Wow. I mean, I had this amazing career in music. You know, I would wow. like to I think I'm one of the pioneers in the game. And I was, I was like, I was, I didn't want to die. I was just ready for the pain to stop. And I went into a downward spiral and I got help. I went to the psychiatrist. When you say pain, mm -hmm. right? Tell me what that is. Cause I don't really, so you know, like, my mom, my mom's mother suffered, uh, a committed suicide, or I heard oh, you I say completed suicide. Yeah, so completed is kind of like the new term that a lot okay. of the clinicians I never heard like that to before. use. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right, so then as my mom uh, got into her mid-60s, right, mm -hmm. um, and retired, mm -hmm. the her past, the decisions she made in her 20s and 30s and things that she hadn't necessarily, I guess, felt she did correctly or whatever started to haunt her and mm -hmm. she was suffering with some depression yeah. and I didn't understand right my first response was but everything's great like we made it we did this and we did these things great we did these things great and I would talk to her and she would go to counseling and do these things and we would talk and, uh, but it was always like I'm there but I, trying to empathize was tough because it's I hard. literally didn't understand what was going on so when you say pain what does that mean so like there were mornings when, and I, I mean, so let me just say this, the last eight years I've been an entrepreneur in the A and I've had ups and downs of thinking if, did I do the right thing? Cause my mother got Alzheimer's, you know, walking away from this big career. I could maybe be president of a label right now, seeing my peers on Instagram. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. um, and so it was tough mentally and the anxiety and the stress just started building and building. There were days I didn't want to get out of bed. I wouldn't open up my blinds. I didn't want to talk to my friends. I didn't want to go anywhere. Because you were afraid of? It wasn't that I was afraid of anything. It was just those thoughts kept just generating and generating in my mind and I was talking myself into a downward spiral. Um, my self-esteem went down. I started eating out of depression. I started gaining weight. And I started second guessing myself. Mm. And so that's the one thing with mental health. When you start going through stress and anxiety and it, it leads to depression and even clinical depression, a lot of times those chemical imbalances are present in your brain. And so you don't have enough of one thing to you know, get those endorphins going. And I had just kind of hit rock bottom. And were you able to express that to people? Did you have people around you you could say, guys, I'm at the bottom or I'm feeling this so way today or I'm feeling that way today? when I was today. going through it, I think I was afraid to tell people. I was embarrassed about what mm. people would say. So that shame and stigma you know, that we always talk about in mental health was there. And you know, the night that I contemplated suicide, I was like driving aimlessly around the city. I was crying uncontrollably. And uh, I ran into a girl. It felt like God just placed somebody in my life. She ran into me in a store on my side of town, and she lives like 45 minutes away. And he just placed her in my path to be like, what's wrong? So she made me call my sister. I called the suicide prevention hotline. They kind of talked me down. And then I text my pastor, and he encouraged me to go see a psychiatrist. Because oftentimes, you know, churches get a lot of slack about saying, oh, you can just pray a trouble right, away right, and right. relate some mental health. But he actually encouraged me to go get the help. And he was like, your job is not done here yet. We need you. And 
So it was this whole big thing. So I did have a few people that rallied around me. Did you, um, were you feeling like you didn't have purpose when you were feeling at your bottom? Did you feel like you didn't understand your purpose anymore or what you were working so for? So it's a little bit of everything because I started doing a lot of community work and, you know, service work, you know, there's no glamour in that, right? And you don't do it for the glamour. You do it to help other people. But I was second guessing myself and I was like, what am I doing? Like, you know, I started this silence to shame movement, but I didn't want to be the poster child for mental health. I was embarrassed. And, and it's interesting that it's now coming up in the forefront of just society in general, not just with our celebrities. And, you know, we've been working so hard for the last few years to bring this to the forefront of the culture. And I feel like it's needed now more so than ever. And so I'm just grateful that I got the help that I needed and now I can help other people. We've it's been interesting. doing some amazing stuff and we really only launched last year in 2017. Yeah, I remember when you told me about it. We've been like pounding the pavement with really no funding. And then you see how much it's needed too. It's interesting that you say that because I've been working with young kids too and the first thing when we talk about mental health, it's like an instant quiet in the room yeah, no one because wants to talk you, about nobody it. even wants to talk about it but a lot of it is shame and it's really sad that it's like well, you you really have to force the conversation even if you're not going through it just to talk about the subject in general well because i think it's it's layered right just like everything we're talking about yep. right i think there's a when you say mental health people go what is that mm -hmm. right b it sounds like some real hospital like a hospital situation where you're mm -hmm. like, well, nothing's wrong with me. I'm just having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, or yeah, nah, I know my, you know, so-and-so was tripping the other day, but we're beyond it, right? Yep, you move yep. on with your day and you're not really you're stopping. You're putting a Band-Aid on it, though. Right, you put, right, because you don't really know, I guess, we're not equipped with knowing when to stop. Mm -hmm. Some people, A, time, B, money, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, C, just even... Is is everything mental health or are certain things confused. mental? And so some of it is yeah. shame. Some of it is straight up ignorance. And like cultural, I don't even yeah. know what you're talking of about. Course. Yeah, it's of cultural course. too. Because a lot of people just feel like you know I've noticed in like in the Caribbean community and in, in between Latinos. I oh, mean now you see sure. it everywhere. You know what I mean? But that's a quick like she said. It's a quick band aid. Like they're quick to hush you. It's it's like a quick hush. It is. A quick touch, it was not like to that talk for about us it. Growing up, but like that's why silence of shame exists because we go out and create panel discussions and teach people in the community. Like we just finished a seven city team mental health tour with the Jack and Jill of America um, Foundation and Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, and we had the teens in there, and like we dealt with some teens right there who were in crisis. Yeah, and we had them write down their questions so that it wasn't so embarrassing for right, them. Right, and right. Some of the questions that we got, I was blown away. So these teens might not want to talk about it, but they are going through it. Blame it on social media, blame it on bullying, blame it on the desire for perfectionism. Like, it's just so much. They're so inundated with so much. Or even their family, their parents. Or how about get, seeing somebody get shot right in front of you? Yep. Right in front of you and you're in a car with your homeboy. So, that's going to be trauma, which turns into PTSD. So where's the line between your... You're just like complaining and being a whiner and you need to get up and handle your business and you're suffering mm -hmm. from some true, like, right. I think that's another piece of it, it where is. you have people who are just like really every day or something like what, go get some help. And then, or parents thinking, oh, you just being a brat, you just being a teenager. Right. Like, where's that line? How do you even know? And, and, and sh you know, so what I'm learning, you know, from the cl clinicians and licensed healthcare professionals if you see that it's something that's persisting like for a long period of time, like mm. they're really doing bad in school, they're acting out, they're angry, they don't want to come out of their room, they don't want to hang out with friends anymore, that's when you really need to start taking notice. If a kid is just kind of being bratty and talking back to you, that's one thing. But when you see that they're like withdrawing from their activities, don't want to be around nobody, and even kind of loosely throwing out the word, I'll just kill myself. Because we know a lot of young kids kind of just say that right now in pop culture. Really? And, and I hate that. Yeah, I mean, I've I had never heard that. some of my nieces and nephews tell me, oh, yeah, you know, kids at my school will just say, oh, I'm just going to kill myself. And it's just kind of like a part I never, of the I didn't vernacular. Know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, they just Because I never played with that. I was always oh, like, I hey, yeah, when I was growing up, you didn't just now. say that. It you is. Were, it is a little bit more for, common with teenagers now. For some of the now. teenagers. And I don't yeah. think they realize the severity of it. Um, and then you see all of the you know, uh, athletes that are coming out, you know, Kevin Love, DeMar DeRozan, and even like, you know, from Mariah Carey and even, you know, Kanye talking about mental health. Diddy's always posting about it. You know, J. Cole mentioned mm -hmm. it, you know, me meditate, don't medicate, you know? Right. So it's, it's, it's people that I think are out there tr trying to bring it to the forefront. And then it's up to people like myself who are just gonna own this thing and own my truth. 
you know, to really try to help and heal people. We are uh, here in New York City are fortunate to have a, a first lady, Shalane uh, McRae, and a uh, mm-hmm. lieutenant governor. Um, damn, I don't know. I Thrive I NYC. Yeah, yeah Thrive I'm all NYC. on it. I have done my research. Yeah, shout out um, to the first lady and the work that they're doing. Yeah, so She's we very passionate here about that. in the yeah. city have, have tried over several years and months to A, have this conversation on Hot 97, and I'm sure it's happening in other places too. Mm-hmm. Uh, B, make it a normal conversation around like, yo, something's happening with me, the thoughts I'm having. I don't like them. I don't mm-hmm. like how I'm feeling. I'm mm-hmm. feeling this. I'm feeling that. And, mm-hmm. and being okay saying, yo, something's happening yeah. with me. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm, I'm feeling out of control and I need a reset. Um, and being able to unpack. No doubt. Right? And, and because it is layered, right? Like it's, even even with like what we're seeing with somebody that we all love musically and, and, and have known that his creativity and craziness was how he kind of came up with the shit we love mm-hmm. and Kanye West. Now it's going to another... Other layers have been added to that with his mother's death and Mm -hmm. the environment that he's in, right? And Mm -hmm. that pressure of being in, you know, all of these things, the the layers start to get uh, thick and deep, heavy. Um, And so you start to try to, like, help somebody unpack these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's the mental health conversation. uh, Kid Cudi's come out. Yeah. Um, I know it's more Kendrick Lamar Kendrick in 2015 Lamar. Yeah, mentioned yeah, yeah. it. I mean, um, The Rock talked about it because his mom um, attempted suicide and that sent him into a depression. I mean, yeah. you name it. So many people have talked about it. And the other thing, too, is, you know, uh, my buddy Free, who works for me, he mentioned that, you know, you got to meet people where they're at. That's why we're trying to do cool things like create content, also use spoken word mm-hmm. to help young students talk about their feelings. You know, we're going to enlist teens to shoot documentaries for us about mental health and wellness. Um, we have people that are writing songs about it because you got you know if you're in the culture you got to make it work for the culture right from Mm. a lifestyle perspective so if we normalize it and use those things that kids love in the culture i think it will allow us to be able to talk about it and make people more okay with it so and and i'm and i'm being funny but i'm I'm gonna try to say it in a real way so we're not making a joke Mm -hmm. there's you know obviously in hip-hop especially amongst men and people be like yo shut your bitch ass up for sure right um that statement you know, f- amongst men, right, of you acting like a little bitch, which obviously emasculates men, right? Mm-hmm. You acting feminine, right? You acting like a little bitch, mm-hmm. um, which is its own l- layered convo. Mm-hmm. But um, are you dealing with that in, in, in black men, right? Because, uh, and men in general, let me not even say black men, but men in general, because, you know, we live in a very hyper-masculine oh, society, absolutely. right, where being and having problems uh, and emotional instabilities, right, it, plays itself out amongst a lot of men where it's like, yo, man up. No doubt. Right? Where's that line? So it's interesting. We did we have a podcast on iTunes under Silence of Shame and we did an episode about men and mental health. And we talked exactly about that. Like you just gotta toughen up or you know, even in my own family I've seen it where, you know, the males wouldn't believe that the other family member when it was initially happening that they were actually going through something, that they just needed to toughen up and be more of a boy, if you will. Um, but that's dangerous. Um, and, and I find that a lot of times the moms are like the first line of defense and they're there to help the child get the help that they need. Because, again, in society, we, we've taught men that they can't be weak. They can't show any kind of weakness. They definitely can't cry. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing I'm seeing, there is a trend with more men starting to go to therapy because I have a lot of clinicians that work with the Silence of Shame movement. And they're they're telling me about the increase, even of black men um, and Latino men that are coming in to seek therapy. So we're excited that. The conversation is opening up again i think when you have more athletes and artists coming out saying therapy yeah. is okay then people you know and, because, be a and bit programs more like yours because honestly it's been effective even when the first lady um you know shalane mccray was here she w- we talked about the she couldn't even believe the amount of calls she was getting through her hotlines or mm-hmm. text programs mm-hmm. and all of that because she you know no one ever really thought when you think about it you put out these hotlines right but like who's gonna call a hotline you'd be surprised for the simple fact that people are shamed into expressing oh, themselves sure. and asking for help. And at the end of the day, I mean, men have a lot on them, right? They're the protectors of the family. They're not supposed to show any kind of real emotion, but they're seeing their friends and family get shot in front of them. Um, I think, you know, even though our president says, you know, that unemployment is down, it's a lot of people like the middle class ain't even the middle class anymore. So then you add that to just the stress and pressure of work or it's just so much from a mental health perspective that could lead you down that dark place if you don't take care of yourself. That's also why we preach about self-care. 
Because if you are not predisposed to a mental health disorder like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or clinical depression, you could be one traumatic experience away from dealing with something. Um, anything could take you there. The loss mm. of a girlfriend, the loss of a parent, um, you know, what's happening in our schools, you know, when there's an active shooter. Those kids are going to experience trauma. I'm getting ready to shoot a documentary around PTSD in the hood because a lot of these kids is acting out. It's because of the trauma that yeah. they of experienced. Course. And, and nobody's really talking about that in our community. Well, there's and let's a, talk there's about the trauma of the violence. From but an then incarceration there's also, standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's the trauma of the uh, lack of family support. Absolutely. And then there's the trauma of looking at, you know, and I and I, this is something I used to deal with with my mom where she would look at what everyone else had going on and assume they didn't have similar problems, mm -hmm. right? We're feeling like, oh, well, you know, this group or this economic bracket or this type of person doesn't deal with oh, yeah. their own version of problems. And I got news for you. Everybody's dealing with something. Nobody is immune to it. We all got our own ish, as I like to say. And it happens like last year we did a panel discussion in Silicon Valley at the Lyft headquarters about silencing the shame. So many people that worked at startups or CEOs and entrepreneurs were in that room talking about the pressure and stress of you get this money from a venture capitalist, right? You got that seed money gotta, that you, you need for your perform. company. You got to deliver. You got to deliver. Yeah. yeah. And we've seen stories of people committing suicide. Um, there was a gentleman who was like the senior VP at eBay. Wife, beautiful wife, two kids, jumped in front of a train. Just couldn't do it anymore. The wow. pressures and stress that was out there. Um, we are partnering also next week in Atlanta with Music Hears, which is mm. the foundation arm of the Grammys, and we're doing a panel called The Soundtrack of Mental Health. Mm. And so we have producer Brian Michael Cox on there and Jan Michael Smith, Cox. who is yeah. like Usher and Justin Bieber's vocal coach, and Dave Lighty's going to be on it. Mm. You know, um, shout out to the late, great Chris Lighty, R.I.P. Chris who Lighty. died of an yeah. apparent suicide. My good friend Shakir Stewart. Shakir, yeah. Uh, yeah. My colleague Robin Sims, who worked at Universal. You yeah. know, I, we don't talk about it, and I'm getting ready to make people talk about it yeah. so that we can heal and get the help you need, especially in music. Because even if, you know, you sit there and you scroll through, everybody's on their highlight reel and their timeline. Nobody's really talking about the stuff that they're really going through. And they're just know, showing you all the good stuff. The, the many people I've talked to, you know, I was very close with Robin, very close with Shakir, very close with Chris Lighty. I showed up at his house as soon as I found out and was dealing with that in real time with the police and everything. It was mm. crazy. Um, and, you know, in all of it, you know, in this business, you know, I think that we're not prepared to deal with what I call deal with the L and accept that losses come, highs and lows come in this game. And if you come in this game not anticipating the day when you're not hot anymore, your time is up, the business changes, you know, th these are things that are just real. And how much of this conversation that you have is about acceptance, right? Because, you know, I was, the people that mentored me in this business used to tell me every single day, net, you're only as great as your last show. Mm -hmm. Always remember that's what they think about you. Mm -hmm. And you can show up on any day and they might be playing different music. Oh, absolutely. And not need you anymore. And if you're not prepared for those things, you're not prepared for this business. No doubt. And you right? And so owning the fact that one day you might be back at the bottom or without a job or and knowing that's always there and accepting that reality mm -hmm. right and just going about day to day and enjoying each day as it comes how much of this i know there's chemical things and hormonal things and other things but how much of the other types of mental health issues have to deal with accepting reality as it is and learning how to i mean i think that plays a part in it but i would beg to differ a little bit that it's just about accepting reality because we don't know what else is going on behind the scenes like, well i'm not saying with you know everybody with right family. like they might so, have other things yeah right? so i mean yeah i think that's with anything with any job especially the entertainment industry right. because there are so many highs and lows and you have to know how to center yourself um i, I like to call it balance in the universe you know right. you, you got to have friends outside the game you know you have a, have a life a hobby or whatever outside the business so yes that does play a part in it but if you have family members so if you're already predisposed to something and you got other issues going on it's just mm. going to compound everything right. else um so it's always to me that could be like 
the catalyst maybe or the pivot in your life when things start going bad maybe in your work environment but then it's like a, a, a ripple effect in everything else in your life and that's how you can kind of go into that deep dark space or deep depression and talk yourself into a downward spiral and I for one certainly can't say why Shakir took his own life but you know he was just just hired at Def Jam mm-hmm. new in the new position new money all of that LA was loving him and so I don't know what you know was going through Shake's mind at the time. He had two beautiful kids and a wife that he loved. And the one thing I've learned, because it took me years to forgive my dad, because I'm like, how could you leave a seven month old baby and two beautiful kids and a wife? But what I learned is, you know, you're not in your right state of mind. There definitely is a chemical imbalance there when you're going through those types of thoughts and having suicidal ideation. So. You know, I try to cut people some slack and be a little bit more compassionate because it is levels to it. And it's about brain health at the end of the day. You know, people are afraid to deal with making sure that the brain health is intact. But your brain is the organ that controls everything else in your body. So why is it when we have heart disease, we'll go see a cardiologist or if we got uh, cancer, we'll go see the oncologist. But heaven forbid, I'm feeling weak or my thoughts is kind of racing or I'm experiencing a little bit mania. I can't go see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. But, yeah, I think that's it's because of how it's termed, it's right? The perception. Like when you when you say brain health, and that's you think why of I like it, to try you think to of it as an now. organ. Absolutely. When you say mental health, people start thinking of it as my thoughts. Like and they I'm go a crazy back to like person. the crazy house. Right. Right. I'm you not know crazy. I mean? Yeah. And people yeah. and people also fail to realize how much help is available. Oh my god. Like how yeah. much because before, you know, yes, it's expensive, but you'd be surprised how much is available to you. Like you can literally look up and find something that A, you can afford or is absolutely free. You're right. And and the one thing I'm learning is a lot of therapists and psychologists work on what's called a sliding scale. Yeah. So that you pay based on your income. Yeah, well you can and afford. What you can afford. And so, yeah, maybe you won't be able to go to the top psychiatrist in your town, but it's a lot of good people out there doing good work. And again, shout out to the Thrive NYC because they're doing some amazing work. They have a 24-hour hotline you can call. We also partner with a group called the Crisis Text Line Organization. Mm -hmm. So we have a keyword. So if anyone listening and you feel like you're in crisis, you can text the word SILENCE to 741741. We're also about to start offering um, free mental health first aid training. And shout out to Brandon Marshall, oh, that's great. who's a football player in this area. Um, you know, he suffers from BPD and he has a, a foundation um, Bipolar. borderline personality disorder. Okay. Borderline person. Okay. Yes. And he has a foundation called Project 375. He and his wife do amazing work um, providing first aid training, mental health first aid training. But going back to your point about brain health, we want to try to change the perception, right, and change the language, if you will, of how people talk about it. That's why I think brain health will go a a lot further. How much of any of your uh, research and work that you've done talks about, obviously, physical health, food, sleep, Mm -hmm. these other things, you know, because then when you start talking, like I've talked to a lot of people, and I'll be like, yo, do you sleep? And they'll be like, yo, man, I don't be sleeping. I'll be like, wait, you don't sleep? Mm-hmm. If you're not sleeping, that's, how you, it, that's the beginning of the problem. No doubt. You know what I mean? It, 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 even after you might be have something running in your family, if you're not able to get a good night's sleep mm-hmm. and you're not putting good food in your body, how are you even going to approach Function. the day? <laughs> Absolutely. You well, know? you're 100% right, Ebro. Um, the one thing I've learned is... Uh, People that have a loss of appetites, that's that could be one of the signs of depression. Mm. Um, but we talk a lot about self-care. So self-care can be exercise. It's been scientifically proven that exercise gets those endorphins going, so it automatically puts you in a better mood. That's one of the things that helped me. Like I try to either walk or work out or do something different to get those endorphins going. Also going out just when it's sunny outside because the vitamin D helps you and puts you in a better mood. Healthy diet, absolutely. It, it would be a good thing to talk to a nutritionist. Um, watch what you're putting into your body because that affects how you think. Um, and that's why we're excited about the um, run walk that we're doing. We're partnering with a group called Harlem Run. Shout out to Allison and Ronald on Saturday, May 12th. For those of you, Harlem, hope you all will stand up and come out and support us. Um, so we're excited about that. But it's about mind, body, soul. It's mm-hmm. about exercise. It's about the lifestyle, the diet, everything that you do. And a lot of people feel like, you know, happiness is a choice, and yes, it is. But sometimes some people are missing some of those ca- chemicals in their brain to make you happy. So, you know, I just want people to be a little bit easier on folks. You know, if they're going through it, you don't know what the next person is really experiencing yeah. and going through. So we got to have a little bit more care in the world. I think the Internet, 
because of the folks that be out there trolling. They've made it hard. You know, everybody quick to clap back and snap back at one another. But you really don't know what the hell people are going through. Yeah, I think and that's we not also, to say you can't, you know, live a productive life. But like, you gotta cut people some slack sometimes. Even yeah. like, yay, like, I might not agree with everything that dude is saying, but like, clearly, there's some stuff going on. And I see a lot of the signs and symptoms of, you know, his behavior. You know, he's a genius on so many levels to me. But you know, the 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 ups and downs and the highs and lows of the personality, those are very symbolic. You know, of certain mental health challenges. And so, you know, shout out to yay. I hope you get, you know. Whatever you need, therapy, you know, diet regimen, you know, to put you in a better place and space because it's needed. I like that. Shanti Daz is her name. Uh, you can follow uh, what they're doing, STS at HHPF.co or silenceofshame.com or at Silence to Shame on IG and at Twitter and Facebook. And you held something up just now. Yeah. So Saturday, May 5th, this is kind of a big deal for us, is National Silence to Shame Day. Okay. Last year when we launched, I just did a self-proclaimed Silence to Shame Day. And I had people from Ludacris to Estelle posting, just using the hashtag. We got 90 million impressions in one day. So this year, we have our National Day. We're using it as a platform to raise funds so that we can keep these programs going. So anybody who wants to donate and join in the National Day, I know it's Cinco de Mayo, but, you know, before you get your drink on, I need y'all to post the word well, silence. Yeah, I think it all work in concert. So, I mean, yeah. so, so text the <laughs> word silence. This could silence. all work together now. <laughs> You have a beverage and donate exactly. and have a great conversation about mental health. So you can text the word silence to 707-070. That's 707-070. And follow us on Instagram at Silence to Shame. And you can check me out on IG at Shanti Das 404. And we come to towns like the island of Bermuda flew us over. Um, Tor Toronto wants us to come up every five months now to do mental health That's training. Great. Like we want worldwide. I'm taking this thing Go ahead, around Shanti, the world. Do it, so. do it, do it. But I want to uh, shout you out though, Ebro, because you came to me last year and you saw what I was doing and said you wanted to help me. And this wasn't always something that some of my peers would openly talk to me about. And you, again, you never know what people are saying. It could be their own issues and they're embarrassed and don't know how to talk about it. But to see my peers that I came in the game with to support me on such an important initiative and cause means a lot. Um, but I'm here, I'm alive, I didn't take my own life, you know, and I'm just trying to show well, we people you. like, you know. We love you. We can all like get the help that we need and get back on our grind. And Listen, do I don't know where I would be without, you know, our friends in this business, right? And, you know, me and my team up here, we have a uh, have been afforded a uh, an opportunity that most people don't have, mm -hmm. which is these microphones. No doubt. Right. So even when we're going through something crazy, right, we can just talk about it. Yep. Right. And we can, and I tell people this all the time, right? Like I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I don't know what I would be without the ability to just come to work and be like, yo, last night, guess what happened to me? Yeah. And then other yeah. people call and be like, yo, me too. Or this happened to me. Or I went through this. Or, yo, you know what? You should try. You know how many things I've learned about myself and mm -hmm. about other people just yeah. from this job? Absolutely. Right? So um, oftentimes when I'm doing what I'm doing here, it's because I want to feel like I'm sharing and people are sharing and we're learning all at the same time. And we might talk some shit and I might tell somebody to shut their bitch ass up. But it's all <laughs> a part of, you know what I'm saying? It's all a part of us communicating, yeah. learning, no and receiving information and energy yeah. from one another. Yeah. You know what and I mean? And respecting everybody's opinion, right? Because yeah. you might not always agree. I mean, I might hang up on you, though. <laughs> it could happen. That's okay. <laughs> Shanti, I love you. Thank you. I You're love doing you great too. work, Shanti. That's right. Thank Silence you. to Shame. Y'all follow him at Silence to Shame. May 5th, National Yay. Silence to Shame Day. And shout out to Under Armour. They're providing t-shirts for the uh, run walk. Remember Harlem, May 12th. Come out with us in Silence to Shame. Boom.